Well, we've got a few more seconds before seven. So. Rita, had you already um, typed up the minutes from? <laughs> <laughs> Elaine, I had no idea where they were. I mean, I looked because I thought, oh God, was it me? I watched, <laughs> I watched you take the minutes <laughs> diligently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's how you knew when you when you um, watched the recording. She was asking who had uh, put the motion forward. And <laughs> <laughs> what was I? Was I writing in a notebook? Did you notice? I should look at it to see where. I, I couldn't tell where you were writing it, but you were looking down all the time and writing. <laughs> And thank you all for your concern for me. <laughs> well, thank you for doing that, Elaine. I was like, I, when Alan called and we were trying to get all the back minutes, I really, you know, I looked through everything. <laughs> My problem is, is that at different times I've used different notebooks and now I'm trying to discipline myself to like, <laughs> and pads. And now I'm saying, okay, I only have like one, one, because it was CPC, it was select board, it was, stuff I do for Amherst, you know, it was all over the place. So, um, but that's very Michael. funny. Hi, Miriam. Hey, everybody. Hi. Hi there. Nice graphic, Miriam. I painted it. Cool. So it looks like we have a quorum. I was just going to say, we have a quorum. Yeah. We get started. Yep. I, I know Mateo can't make tonight because he has a family problem, death in the family. Oh. So um, I guess that's, well, and Henry is, I, I didn't hear from Henry about tonight. So I don't know. Well, let's get, let's get started. We'll call the meeting to order. Um, Chris, welcome, by the way. Hello, thank you. You're welcome. Um, well, the first, uh, first uh, item on the agenda is the minutes, which we were just talking about. So um, the meeting from March or May 6th, mm -hmm. uh, for some reason, we never apparently okayed. And I don't know how that happened. So you should all have a copy of that. I believe. Elaine transcribed it from the from the recording. I had taken minutes, but right. I never yeah. found them. So they were so, never. So, so we, we don't know actually what happened. Well, no, we do because Elaine listened to the whole meeting. Um, <laughs> well, I, I, know for this, I know for this version, but there must have been a version from the actual meeting. Doesn't matter. Let's not go there. Right. OK. Right. So I make a motion that we approve the um, minutes of May 6th. Second. Uh, all those in favor, any, com any comments? No, they were good, Elaine, thank you. Okay. Hanson, aye. Farrell, aye. Leo, aye. Take care, aye. Oh, uh, Scott, I'm abstaining because I, I didn't um, fully read them, so. Okay, one abstention. Um, so the other one meetings are the meetings. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Henry. Right. Hen Henry's here. Henry's here. Oh, Henry's here. Where, oh, there he is. <laughs> you, you snuck in on me. Um, we were just voting on approving the minutes of uh, March, uh, May 6th. Which which got lost and I, I think you have a copy, Henry, at some point. Nope. But he's got to stay and he wasn't there. He wasn't you're, at the meeting. Well, you weren't at the meeting anyway, but your 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 audio is off. He doesn't have to abstain, actually. Really? No. Technically, you don't have to abstain. No, no, you don't have to. He he can hmm. vote if he wants to. I mean, I feel like I was at the meeting since I watched it. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> You know, oh, I can, um, this is Linda, I can change my vote. I just read them, so I can. Okay, they were can, short. I, yeah. yeah. So okay, I can, great. Yeah. They were short. Uh, I. I. <laughs> so Henry, what is your vote? Uh, I, I've not read it. Uh, did okay. you send it? Okay. Out? Okay, so you're abstain? I'll yeah. abstain then. 
Okay, so Henry Oldstein. All right, so the second meeting, uh, second minute. Hey, Alan, are... can I ask a quick question? Just sure. Elaine, for wonkiness sake. So you don't have to be there, but if you read it or viewed it, then you can vote. It's an informed vote, not a present or not present vote. Yes. That, that's correct. Got it. Okay, so in the olden days, if you weren't at the meeting, you'd have no clue. Right. Got it. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, so the minutes from um, October 27th. Does anybody have any comments? I think they were great. Yeah, I make a, a motion that we approve the minutes of- I, I, have, I have a comment to make. Oh. Um, there, there's, there's a, that was the meeting in which we were talking about the Pearson property. And um, there was some discussion about whether it was appropriate or not. I, in my opinion, that nothing I suggested there was inappropriate to the meeting. There were two, two issues. One issue was um, whether the committee still considered preservation of our forests and uh, open land as a, as a critical one for us. And the second issue was whether, um, given the fact that uh, the, the Pearson property timing was, was way off for anything that we could have done, there, there was no, there was very, it was very unlikely that we were ever gonna be involved in that. So um, the, 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 the point, that I was trying to make there was whether or not we should invite Jeff to tell to bring us up to date on what was happening with that. Those are the two points that I was trying to make. And I'd like those reflected in the minutes of, of that meeting. That's, those are my comments. Anybody well, else? Well, just having taken them, just to clarify, Alan, the first point, are you, you're, you're, Nowhere in here does it say that it was inappropriate that you brought it up. You're you're saying that you want to be recorded as having say that said that the committee it wasn't inappropriate for the committee to consider it. Is that what you're saying? No, what I'm saying what I'm saying is that the that the, the, the minutes don't adequately represent um, what I actually said. That that was my only point, and I just wanted on record that 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 that's that was my point. Any other, any other questions? Is, does that answer your question, Michael? Uh, it didn't clarify it for me. I'm like, so do you want us to change, amend these minutes? Is that what you're suggesting? Um, I, but we, I don't think we have to change the minutes, but, but in the minutes of this meeting, I think we ought to mention that I brought that issue up. Okay. Could you, could you restate that, please? I'm sorry, I was, I was looking at the minutes and trying to find where you were on that. I'm away at the bottom of the page. Um, there's an indication here that I was asking for support or non-support of the, the Pearson, uh, almost like a, a, a determination of eligibility, which was not the intent at all. What it was, um, was whether or not we still considered protection of land as one of our prime goals. And also that, um, that because of the timing of the that thing, the, of the of the Pearson issue, that we were never going to have a major role in in in, in it anyway. So it was just a discussion. I know somebody said they thought it was illegal what I was doing, but it, it, I, I I don't I don't see that. It was absolutely no intent to in, pretend that that was a determination of eligibility. It was just a discussion about one whether we still were concerned whether we still have a high priority on our forests and open land. And number two, whether we should, should have invited Jeff to the next meeting or not to bring us up to date on the Pearson property. Those are the two issues. Okay. Uh, can I suggest that those get reflected in the, um, in the minutes of tonight's meeting? That's what I'm saying. We can do yeah. tonight's meeting. Okay. That's fine. All right. As long as it's on record. So. <clears throat> okay. So, Anybody, Any other comments on the uh, um, October 27th minutes? Uh, I I was not perhaps on the list of folks receiving these minutes. I don't have a, a copy of the minutes, so I I, I don't either for some reason. Comment on it. I, I, I sent them around. 
Un unless it went to another email, which. No. Well, Henry, you're not. I have Henry. You have to get onto the CPC distribution. I know, Linda, you're you're didn't want to be. No. Yeah. Right, but but Alan is, is is he on it now, yeah. Michael? Say again. Is, is he on the distribution list now? Henry he Henry isn't, but I mean, I'm I'm just in. You sent them out, so everyone should have them. But no, if no, no, you sent them to uh, Michael. You sent them to the CPC, and they right. didn't. Yeah. Oh, up. Alan didn't send them out after that. No, okay. what I was saying, I, I shouldn't have said I sent them out. They, they got sent out. Yeah. If if it was only me, then correct. Linda, and it was an oversight by my. Um, so I think my I point. think we should probably wait on those until everybody had read them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. So we'll delay okay. them. And we'll, we'll move them till next meeting. Yeah. Linda, I'll send it to you now. And no. Henry, if you want me to, I'll add you to the list. Yeah, you, Michael. If you you might as well add me to for simplicity purposes. Okay. Fine. Yes, thank okay. you. Okay, sure. I making a note here, remind myself. Okay, uh, any other comments on the, on the minutes? So we shouldn't vote on them tonight. We'll vote on them next time. So the second item on the agenda was presumably going to be a welcome to Mateo and actually to Henry as well, because we, they were both voted in on like, what last select board meeting, Rita? Yes, I believe so. Right. Yes. Mateo is not here, but welcome, Henry. <laughs> anyway, um, we can do that next time. Okay, so uh, the third item is, is one of the big ones, um, and it, it has to do with the, the Kessel Trust plans for the Ames Pond project. I don't know if you've all walked around Ames Pond, but it has this beautiful boardwalk and a, and a walk up to the mountain. And so either Chris or, or, or Bridget, I, uh, when are you going to speak to that? Uh, that would be me, Alan. Okay. Um, and just to try to alleviate any future confusion about who the point people are at Kestrel for these two projects we're talking to you about. I'm your point person for Ames Pond and Bridget Likely, who is also here tonight, um, is your point person for the Pearson acquisition project. Okay. Uh, and, so it, and when you and I talked to Alan, um, we, we planned for me not to attend this meeting. <laughs> I remember that. I was surprised when you were here. And yet here I am. Yeah, right. So I, I would like to, I would like for Br Bridget to to have the bulk of of the time, um, so she can thoroughly explain the Pearson project to you. It's, that was the, I think, the main goal um, of of your agenda when we originally talked about it. But I'm I'm more than happy to go over the Ames project for everyone as well. I, I would much rather spend more time on the Ames project rather than the Pearson. We're not, we're, we're probably never gonna be involved in the, in, in the Pearson project. We just don't, so that, that's, I don't think that's gonna be on the agenda again, unless, unless something comes up. There is one thing I wanna discuss about related to that. I'll bring that up later. So could, could you talk about first and then maybe, Bridget could could jump in. Does that work for you, Bridget? Or yeah, I'm I'm a little surprised to hear that comment. So I'm I'm eager to give updates and and hear your your thoughts. But um, Chris, please go first. Okay. So I'll let you two guys work it out. However you want to do it. <laughs> okay. Oh well, you know what, Alan? I would really like for Bridget to go first. <laughs> okay, Bridget, you're on. Sure. Um. So I. Miriam, also, if you yes. want to be. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so uh, in terms of where we are with the Pearson project, I'm not sure exactly what Jeff briefed you on at the original meeting, um, but we're prepared to go forward with it, um, with hopefully we're expecting to have some CPA involvement. So we're currently, in terms of timeline and negotiations, with the realtor currently and hoping to um, make an offer and secure a purchase and sale agreement with them um, that would allow us time to uh, seek out CPA funding. So we do have federal funds in place already 
to meet up to 75% of the asking price, which is currently $275,000. Um, and so we would be hoping to go to CPA for that 25% match, um, which would be around 68,000. Um, and we've talked about, you know, who would be taking on this land. And so Miriam and I spoke, and I went to the last conservation committee meeting um, and pending, you know, final approval from them. Um, the conservation commission is willing to be the CPA applicant and to ultimately be the one to own the, the land. The Excuse Pearson me, land. Could, I, could I interrupt you for one minute? Did you say 68,000 from CPC would be the match? So that's what we were originally intending, but we are, you know, understand that that, you know, might be a bigger asking price than CPC is willing to go for. Um, we know that's CPC has never done a land acquisition project in Shootsbury, and that would be probably the biggest ask that we've had to date. Um, but that's just, you know, we're showing what we still need in terms of funding is that 25% match. And so obviously we can seek elsewhere, Miriam, if you want to speak to that. We can, but that's just where we are in funding right now. Miriam. So we talked about um, Bridget and Penny Jakes and I met um, last week and had an initial discussion. And um, we did talk about applying to the CPC for grant money. Um, we also talked to a couple, a couple of other potential funding streams. Um, one is that the Conservation Commission has a conservation trust fund that has a chunk of money in it that's taken a long time to acquire, and we don't want to spend it all in one, one project. I think we would, um, but it is potentially possible that there would be some matching funds from that fund. Um, another possibility would be applying uh, to the land grant program with the Division of Conservation Services for a land grant fund um, to finance part of this as well. So uh, we're not ruling anything out at this point. We're looking at all the options. Okay. Yes. So Bridget, when you're talking about the CPA funds, are you talking about Shootsbury funds? Correct, yes. You, you know that that we we can't we have to a procedure we go through and and there would be no funds available even if the town voted on it until after town meeting no we are we are aware of that um and so we are going you know currently going to the realtor and making an offer and seeing if they're willing to wait for closing until after um town meeting and then if that's not a possibility then Kestrel is open to pre-acquiring the land and holding the land until after town meeting and funds are available. And then the town would buy the land from Kestrel. Okay, so if you're interested in coming to us, um, we have on our website uh, a form, a, 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 an eligibility form that you have to fill mm -hmm. out and submit to the committee. Yes, this, and so- It's due on December 6th. 10th. 10th. Fifth, December 5th. Yeah, we're aware of that form and I'm working on that form with Miriam and the Conservation Commission be the one to be the applicant on that form. Okay, okay. Alan, is this the time that I can ask a question? Yeah, sure. I had my hand up. You had your hand <laughs> oh, sorry, up. Yeah, first, sorry. Michael and then Jeff. <laughs> um, let me take my hand down. Uh, so I can't I see guess your hand by the, by the way. Uh, Linda is the, the host of this. I can't see your hands here. Okay. All right. So I'll, I'll, I'll so go ahead. hands. Okay. So go ahead. Well, I can see other people's hands, though. Um, I can't. So I had a question for um, Bridget. Uh, does Ketchel Trust do an appraisal before an yes. acquisition? I mean, to, to offer the asking price to me seems um, quite unusual. So it it is um, not always the way we go, but it's offering the asking price pending an appraisal. So we're asking, okay. making the offer with the purchase and sale agreement, giving Here us 45 go. days to go through the appraisal process and our other um, due diligence. Can you tell me the, the asking price please for the minutes? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Sure, 275,000 for 34 acres. And who engages the appraiser? Castro would engage the appraiser. Okay, there are any other questions? Jeff has his hand up. Anybody else have their hand up? Yeah, you, you had yours up. 
All right. Um, so Michael's so first, first then, Jeff. He's on the committee. Thank you, Jeff. Um, so last time when we talked about this briefly, one of the things that came up that I think we agreed to was that um, if there, if you even proceeded towards a purchase, so we should be asking Amherst for CPA because this is the water that goes to their drink, drinking supply. We just happen to be at the headwaters. So Kest, is Kestrel talking to Amherst for their CPA funds? So we did talk to um, Amherst and consider Amherst, but we also thought of it as, you know, not only could it be, it is, you know, surface water supply land, but it is also recreation land, open space land, and the Conservation Commission expressed interest in having it be town owned conservation land that could be used for passive recreation for the town. Yeah, yeah I'm, not, I'm not thinking about it exclusively for Amherst, but of the 68,000 that you're looking for, it mm -hmm. seems like both towns would contribute. Um, and one could say, according to their means. Yes, you know, we can explore that as you know, a matching option to Shootsbury CPA, certainly. Did I answer your question, Michael? Yeah. Jeff, you had your hand up. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I did have a meeting with our town attorney on Friday. It was um, mostly on ZBA and planning board matters, other topics, but I snuck this one in. Um, and I asked her whether there would be an impediment um, in the law for CONCON funds to be applied to this purchase and then um, reimbursed back to the CONCOM all or part by the CP, CPA funds, uh, which would come later after a, a town meeting vote. And she said that there, she was aware of no impediment to that to that process um, of, of handling it. So CONCOM has ready funds, other ready funds were, were available, um, then CPA funds could backfill at a later time, especially if it was all um, a part of an arrangement that was known up front by all parties. Great, thank you, Jeff. I'll make a note of that. So, yeah. so uh, I just have one thing to add to that. After our last discussion, I started looking around and I went to the CPC coalition pages. And um, there is a mechanism by which Conservation Commission and affordable housing can create trust funds into which the CPC can put money that can be used for projects that are allowable under the CPA um, requirements. And they don't have to go back so the, the trust funds are created by town meeting, money is put in, and then that money can be used uh, for projects without going back to town meeting. Uh, I think I sent copies of this, or didn't I send copies of this around to everybody? No. Okay, I, I will. Um, I, I'm positive, but I don't, I don't know why things aren't happening. Um, well, I'll send it around and um, we can bring this up at another meeting, uh, if, so, we, if if we want to if we want to consider this mechanism, and yeah, Michael, it, yeah, I I guess uh, we sort of jumped into this, and, and it feels like there's. Um, I'm just trying to pick up the threads from the last meeting, which, you know, as I remember them, were you know we wanted to follow the lead of the CONCOM and maybe open space, but other committees in town. And so I guess whether we do it now or at the time that the DOE is submitted, but it would be helpful to get an actual, um, not presentation, but some, some reporting out from the CONCOM. So Miriam could do it now, just in terms of like, if it's been discussed at the CONCOM, what they think. Uh, it sounds like there's support, but the thinking behind it and then I think we should proactively have open space or recreation or whoever else, you know, might have interest in this that we articulated last time we wanted to ask for, you know, prioritization, you know, so that we we're sort of looking for the other committees to prioritize. Um, so uh, whether we do it now or in December, I think that we need to do that. Comments? I believe there was something we just received um, the major uh, document from the open space committee, I didn't read all of it, but was there something in there that 
had any indication of this? I don't recall. I do not either. I'll I haven't read it yet. You haven't read it? Either. No, it, it, it I, just, I just got it. Yeah, you just got yeah. it today. So Miriam. Yeah, um, maybe I can just respond to the question from Michael. Um, and Penny has been a part of this discussion. So she's been weighing in on behalf of the open space committee as well. Um, I guess what Penny's shared is that, you know, the town residents have communicated in past surveys that what they would like to see is more conservation or recreation land with trails that people have access to, that that is priority for people to have, um, you know, on properties that they people can go to to walk their dogs or hike or cross country ski or whatever it is for passive recreation. Um, and what was of interest with this particular property for us was really twofold. One is that you know there are wetlands on this property. There's the headwaters of Amethyst Brook are on this property, so that makes it an interesting property, both to preserve and also kind of scenic for hiking trails. I think. Um, but then the other piece is that because of Kestrel's availability with the Forest Legacy Funds, it's really an opportunity right now to leverage um, a smaller contribution from us to purchase property that may not be available in the future for other <coughs> the other properties that come up at times that are available that may have equal or even better conservation value, but not with um, the possible funding stream. Um, it's interesting what Alan you're saying about um, this idea of a trust fund with the CPA funds because that would make the process more nimble because right now you know when we when properties become um, available on the market, you really kind of have to move on them. You, have, you can't wait a year and a half um, to develop a proposal and go to town meeting and get it approved. It's, it's, it's a cumbersome process unless there's some other funding stream. So okay, that, that's the way this, this opening paragraph of this document I was reading said, have you ever been in a situation where uh, land has come up and you can't respond to it because of the, the fact that the money's not available in, a, in, in fast enough? So this, okay. was, this has been the, this has been, they, they foresaw this problem and they put up, they put something in to take care of it. So I think I think this committee, our committee, ought to take a look at this, maybe at our next meeting, a little closer, just to take a look. Well, would that, the second would question. That, would that be like an application from, let's say, the Conservation Commission to create uh, a trust fund? Is that what it would require? Well, I haven't I haven't digested the whole thing yet, Miriam. But it looked to me like by a quick read that the trust funds are created within the committees. Like the Conservation Committee would have a trust fund. And that trust fund would have two parts to it. One part, which is the, the money you guys get elsewhere. Other part would be money that was put in there by the CPC. The, the money put in by the CPC can be used for projects that are uh, allowable under, this, under the CPA. So it, it, there's, a, there's a dual financial part of it, but the money is available without having to go back through town meeting. So I, I would recommend everybody, it's, this is in the coalition page, the, co, the CPC coalition, I'm sorry, the CPA coalition website. It's easy, I'll send around, I'll send around a copy of it and I'll send around the link to it. Um, oh, can I ask you a follow-up question? Uh, yeah, the question is, can I answer it? No, it's not for you. Oh, <laughs> so that's so it's I'll, easy. I'll sit, I'll sit back then. <laughs> yeah, um, it's mostly, I was, I'm sort of um, struck by what Miriam said, which is, you know that there's other properties that are have better conservation or open space value, but that you know Kestrel's not necessarily willing to put money into that. So I guess that just it's a two part question. One is um, to to bridge it. If the town identified something that had greater conservation value or open space value, um, is there a reason you wouldn't want to look at that? And then the second part is: Have you and Mir the two of you, Miriam and Bridget, talked about? What the other properties are, because it seems like if if collectively two entities are going to be putting in money, um, and there are already had properties that are better suited for either conservation or open space, why wouldn't we be doing those? Michael, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't. Michael, I didn't say that there were. I said there could be in the future. 
that was the point I was making. And not that I was aware of any right now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And, you know, Castro is always open, you know, to seeking future projects. It's, you know, it was really, as Miriam was saying, just a question of timing and opportunity. And this project came up and there's this coupled with the development risk. And you see that we have the funding in place. There's, you know, the development risk. And, and we feel like it's, it's a worthwhile project to go for. It has, you know, strong conservation values. Um, and we have the funds in place and, and we feel like it, it's worthwhile. You know, it went through our lands committee and went through our board last week. So it went through our own internal review process. Okay. And that part makes sense. I, I got the impression there was multiple ones. And if there was something that okay. was better, I didn't understand why we would not be looking at those. Alan, I just had a, uh, I would challenge you on development risk, Bridget. <laughs> Uh, you know, there is other has been other land for sale in town and and Shootsbury has not has not seen a lot of development, nor do I think this is really development risk. I think it should be promoted for conservation and recreation, but not as an anti development um, purchase. I think that's that's really troublesome. Any other any, any other comments, hey, Jeff? Yeah, just to answer that, um, without without putting any value on development versus not development, I mean, this is a property that has 2,000 feet of frontage. I mean, frontage equals development potential. No, it doesn't. There's a, there's a big parcel on Wendell Road that's many, like 25 acres for sale. It's, it's has was on the market for years. I think it has 1,500 feet. So... I would challenge you on that. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll respond <laughs> back that this is being advertised as a developable parcel on, you know, by the realtor. Um, anything that's got 2,000 feet of frontage um, with seven to 800 feet of depth um, is developable. And it's being on the planning board, I would say there's probably six lot potential here. Um, it's, it's not a piece of property. I know there's another one in town um, down by Brown's Pond that um, <laughs> is much larger and probably cheaper per acre, um, but very difficult to develop for a number of different reasons. Um, one being it doesn't have easy frontage. It would have to be developed through subdivision, and that would be very difficult and unlikely. Um, planning Board sees these all the time where uh, the frontage is carved off of, uh, of our existing roads. It's very easy to do. We have only 21 days to review it and almost no ability to deny it. So this parcel would fit into that type of readily developed piece of land. <laughs> and if, if building lots are valued in Shrewsbury, then uh, this could certainly be converted to building lots. I'd like to uh, terminate this conversation here and, and hold it off for another meeting. I mean, there's lots of land around and it's, it's up for sale. And <coughs> but the, uh, the Pearson property and also, can we talk about the Ames, Ames Pond project? Chris? Sure. Um, and thanks for your interest in the project, Alan. Um, so I spoke with Alan on the phone about this project last week, I think. Um, and uh, just to give you a little background, as you, you probably are all aware, um, Kestrel received a bequest of land um, from Julian Janowitz. Uh, he owned about 150 acres or so on Wendell Road. And um, after uh, carving out uh, about eight acres around the house, um, the rest was um, left to Kestrel at his death, which was at the end of 2019. Um, it's taken a while for that bequest to work through the process and actually come to us. So it came to us this year and we are now um, assessing the property um, for recreational use. Um, most of you probably know that Mr. Janowitz made the proper property available to the public during his lifetime. He created a fairly extensive trail system on the property. 
he built a, a boardwalk through um, a pretty uh, stupendous looking bog um, on the edge of the wetland and um, also some trails uh, closer to the pond edge as well as some upland trails, including one that uh, climbs uh, the ledge up to a lookout point right on the edge of the, the um, Temenos property. Um, so it's, it, we feel that it's a special place that has a lot to offer. It's proven that it has a lot to offer to the local community um, yes. through people's, the popularity it seems to have had um, over the years and people's interest um, that it be protected um, for recreational use. Um, and we'd like to see what we can do to restore the trail system. It's been a while since Mr. Genowitz uh, did his work out there and he wasn't able to maintain the trail system during his illness. Um, so things uh, do need some care and attention. Um, and we've been um, in, the dis in a series of site visits and, dis and discussions with um, the consulting company, SWCA, to look at what it might take, uh, particularly um, feasibility of restoring the boardwalk, um, also what, what to do with trails that are closer to the pond in the wetland area, and also the, the current entrance which is um, through a somewhat wet meadow um, to the pond edge. Uh, and we're thinking of this, uh, it could potentially be um, quite an expensive project. Uh, we do think that there are some possibilities for um, an accessible component to the project. And we are looking at, at uh, at least one other funding source, which is the Recreational Trails Program, um, which we, we apply to pretty much annually now, um, one or two applications a year um, for trail projects. So um, we are planning on applying to the Recreational Trails Program for at least a component of this, this project. So um, we, we'd love to get some support from the CPC um, for this project. One advantage of that for us would be, you know, Alan was, was mentioning the, the disadvantage of the timing <laughs> for land projects from the perspective of applying to a recreational trails grant versus getting CPC funding. If we, if we succeed in getting recreational trails funding for this project, we would not have access to that money until the end of 2022 at the earliest. Um, so getting some, some funding from the town before then would be great because we could, we could get started even earlier. Um, what we're doing right now is um, we are, uh, we've already cleared um, trees from the upland portion of the property that's easily accessible from the current entrance. The bog bridge is, is problematic at this point. It spent much of this year being flooded. Um, some of you folks may have been out there and may know, may know this from your experience out there. Um, so uh, we are working on, working on a phased um, approach where we make the upland trails in the, in the Northwestern portion of the property available to people for immediate use. And that's the area we're encouraging them to use. Um, and we will, we will post signage um, regarding the bog bridge uh, and safety issues around using it and probably seasonality of using it. We have a staff member who lives very nearby, which is handy. So he's going to be stopping by frequently to assess conditions and let people know whether whether the, the bog bridge is essentially open or closed while we're waiting for funding to to hopefully restore it. Um, so the the component of the project that or the phase of the project that we might be interested in seeking funding for from the from CPA would be um, the entrance 
so it would it would be um, expanding the parking area by removing um, the 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 existing invasive vegetation that lines the back of the parking area and and sort of borrowing some space to increase the size a bit to accommodate a few more cars and then um, getting people across the entrance meadow um, which right now the thought is um, a possible uh, raised uh, uh, crushed stone uh, trail uh, leading to sort of a, a wooden puncheon. Um, and our feeling is since there is infrastructure pretty much needed to get people through that meadow and protect the resource while keeping people dry, we might as well make it accessible and get people to the edge of, edge of the pond and possibly have a viewing platform there um, that folks can come and go to the pond edge and enjoy the view, which is very nice from, from that point. Um, so I that right now, a, that is the accessible component that we're thinking about. I think there's a question, Chris. Yeah, Elaine. It's not a question. It's a, I'm on the Recreation Committee, and we have discussed this um, on the Recreation Committee. Um, I'm also very familiar with the trails in there. I've uh, uh, run and hiked them many, many, many times. And so we are actually um, having a uh, trail walk uh, November 30th at three o'clock there that um, I was going to lead people who haven't been able to go there. Um, it's extremely accessible now. I'm, I'm surprised to hear that uh, you would do something to change the access uh, in the, the entrance meadow. Um, and the boardwalks are in quite good shape right now. They have been repaired. They're in very good shape compared to uh, a number of years ago. So uh, it's, the trails are there and they're very, um, they're very nice to have. They are not accessible, of course. That's, uh, and that's a nice idea to be able to get people up through that, that first area and to at least be able to see some of uh, Janowitz's sculptures on the property and such and to get a view of the pond. But if uh, the, the Recreation Committee is very much in favor of this and they would uh, be there, the supporting committee uh, to the C for CPA funds. And if anyone is interested in this group or any of the groups, we're, we're gonna be, we'll be meeting at Town Hall at 245 on November 30th and um, driving down to the property because some people don't know where the property is actually. And we'll drive down there and we'll do there's it's a it's a loop that let, it's about a three mile loop if you don't go up to the Temenos overlook. Elaine, I, I don't know when you were there last, but we were there a couple of weeks ago and the, the boardwalk is not walkable all the way around unless you're wearing boots. Oh, no, it's not walkable all the way around. The board, there is no boardwalk all the way around, but there uh, is uh, way in the back. It goes all the way over to the other side of the. Yeah, yeah. You can make yeah. a complete circle. Uh, you no, used to be able to. Right. That's what I'm saying is that part of the boardwalk is not, but uh, okay. the, front, the front part of it and to, to make a trip around it, uh, the three mile loop, you can still, at least I did it two weeks ago. So um, I'm did assuming. Did you get wet feet? We got wet feet. No, not oh. really. Elaine, um, Elaine, are you saying just a just a question? Did you did you go south and and pass the house and around that way? No, no, you didn't. You no. used the bog bridge to get to the back of the property. Yep. Yeah, I mean there the, it, it is a dynamic situation out there. Um, right. One minute there are people be. unknown to us who are, and we 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 don't necessarily want to know because these people. People are doing this without permitting <laughs> who are doing some repairs um yes. yes we've seen that without asking permission um so um i thought that was you who were doing nope, it nope that's not <laughs> us that is not us and okay, it has been noted that good. some of the repairs are not um necessarily the safest alternative i think that it's so, it's been such a community property for years for the people who live in that area that um most people just 
feel that if if it's broken, they'll fix it, and they go in, and the community has been fixing it. Yeah, so, this, as, 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 we, as, as we talked last week, you are going to be submitting a determination of eligibility form, correct? Yes. Okay. So, mm -hmm. what do you say we hold the conversation off until we get the thing, and we'll talk about it again? Uh, that yeah. sounds great. I do have one question for I do have one question for the committee, if I could ask very quickly. Okay. Um, I did look at at last year some of the projects that you were considering, and I noticed that the the highest amount that seemed to be uh, to be awarded was twenty thousand for a community garden. I think perhaps was being considered something like and that. Yeah. Other projects were closer to the five thousand dollar range, maybe a little more, a little less. And I was just curious what you consider to be like, what are your expectations for a request for a recreational project? I personally can't answer that. Anybody else want to take a shot at it? I, I think we're open to whatever. Yeah, are you whatever subject to sticker shock? <laughs> yeah, we will look at it and maybe say, oh my God. But but yeah, I, I don't think there's any, any limitation to what we might consider. Ellen, Ellen, Ellen I'm sorry, Linda, Michael, Michael and I would like to talk. Michael came first and then me. We have, I have a question. Linda, you're so nice. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I guess I had a two part question. So Elaine, unlike you, I don't even know where, I've never been there. So just before we sort of stop talking about it, we're talking about um, Ames Pond and near that area. Can you describe like where, I'm looking at Google Maps. So I'm just trying to figure out okay, where. So, so you know where, um, where the new culvert was put in on Old Wendell Road? Um, no. Well, that's I, I don't go up and down Wendell Road very often. So. Okay, it's it's on it's on the Old Wendell Road part, and if you if you drive it, um, you will see a new culvert, and very soon after that, there's um, a horse stall on your left, and the parking lot for um, going into the Ames Pond area is on your right. It's just okay. before we get to the lake, Michael. Okay, and I guess the other related question is, it's sort of in, am I correct that it's in the vicinity of the Southport Conservation Area to some degree, or no? Not really. Up is, okay. Up the side of the road. Okay, okay, thank you. Yes. Any other questions? Yes. Any other, yes, Linda. Linda, Linda yes. Um, Chris, I um, believe that I, um, when I read um, the email that you sent to Alan, you talked about um, the need, well, you're working with SWICA and um, the need to be filing uh, a wet, for a wetland permit with the Conservation Commission. And I think you had a question maybe about timing for doing that. And I just wanted to check in and see. Are you asking about my question? Yes. Yes, we were, we were asking whether, um, we were interested in, in potentially moving the permitting forward before we know whether we have uh, the award. And we just didn't know if that would create a problem within the town. No. Okay. No, I'm the, actually, I'm the Conservation Commission representative to- Yes, the, I remember you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. And um, so, um, yes, it makes, I was gonna say it makes sense to get the permitting process going because we're approaching winter and that could present some delays and site visiting, et cetera. So it seems like it would make sense to move Great. forward with that. Great, thank you for clarifying that. Great. You're welcome. Are there any other questions for our guests? Yes. I have one more question. Um, so Chris, do you have any sense of cost at this point for what you've identified as the, as the scope? For the entire project? Not the entire, I know the entire project. I remember, you know, Kestrel Good, I'm glad came you're not asking us. about the entire project. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know it's a we scary were, number that we're working yes, to lower. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember having a conversation about the Janowitz property uh, a few years ago on the CPC, but for this particular scope for the um, invasive species, for the parking, for the access through the field there. Yeah, I do have a number. Um, right now, we're looking at about twenty thousand for that. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Any other comments from our guests? 
Okay, thank, well, thank you. you. Thank you yeah. for coming tonight yes. and sharing. Yes. All thank that. you both. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you for your time. You're welcome to stay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, let's see, I think the next item on the agenda was a review of our yearly calendar. Is there any reason to actually do that? I put it on there because it was some dates had changed, I thought, somewhere along the way. I think we're good because we did yeah. it um, recently. Because our next meeting will be on the 16th of December, which we will review the determinations of eligibility. Great. Okay. So nobody knows of any conflicts. Okay, so um, Elaine, you were going to, sorry, what? I was just going to say the only challenge with that evening now is that is the date of the open space forum. And I don't know how people might, how, you know, if that's going to be a conflict for members of the committee. What time is the open space forum? I think it's at seven. I'm not positive. I just have it on my calendar. Um, um, I can tell you. Let's see. Seven o'clock. Seven to eight thirty. And it's a Zoom meeting. So could we meet earlier? Could we meet at six? Because I would like to go to the open space forum. Mm. Yeah. Be worthwhile. Should, it we might. Change, should we change the date? Oh God. <laughs> You wouldn't, oh, we, you, you, you wouldn't believe what this week has been trying to find a date <laughs> for this. Uh, um, yes, just, I believe. I don't want to ever have to do that again. Yeah. Well, if we just change the time, it might be easier. I'm wondering, Rita, if we did 5.30, because if yeah. we do it. Yeah, we could do 5.30. Yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah, and then we might, if we ended at 6.30, then you have half an hour to. Um, Rita, yes, five, or, or, 5.30 I mean, is fine for me. Linda, is 5.30 open? Can you see? I don't have the. Oh, Elaine, are you on the calendar? Yeah, do you have it open in front of you? Ah, I can. Uh, let's see. Does anybody have it? Hold on, I have it, I have it. Let's see, for... December 16th. You this know, open space is the only one listed. Yeah, there's gonna be yep. a ZBA meeting at seven that night. Yep, that's the only one. That's the only one that's listed on the on for that night. Yes. So should we move this back to 5.30 or something or? Yeah. 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 And, and we'll plan to be done by seven so that yes. um, there is no conflict. Yeah. Right. And we'll post the Zoom link so no one has a problem. <laughs> yeah, can you do it right now, Michael? <laughs> <laughs> right this instant? <laughs> we could get our meeting on there, yeah. Yes. Yeah, let, let's do that. We can you do it? meeting up we, and then we, we we've booked the space if we put our meeting yes. on. Yeah, right. five thirty the sixteenth, right? Yes. Yep. Okay, good. Um. So, uh, uh, Miriam. Yeah, I'm not going to stay in your meeting long. Um, but I wanted to know whether um, we were going to take a minute, Henry, to mentioned to the committee. Um, it's on the what agenda, actually. Oh, is it on the agenda? Hey, I got Henry. He, he's oh, down. He's down okay. right after Elaine. Yep. OK, great. OK. I'll stay then. <laughs> oh, so, so, I, so Elaine, yes. you were going to tell us something about the Recreation Committee and the community garden and that kind of stuff. Yes, um, we've, been, we've been holding off on starting our project of the community garden for two reasons. One is that we don't feel like we have um, a, an agreement with CPC worked out that we would really like to have in writing what, um, what funds we're getting and how, um, how we're going to be able to use it and what the flexibility is for using it. But also the other reason that we were uh, holding off was because we were um, waiting to see what the library proposal was going to end up being. And in that process, we have been talking with Marianne and other uh, members of the community. And we really feel that the community garden would benefit from being um, adjacent to the library. And uh, now that 
the proposal for the library is to go to, to go to lot 032. We know that it's not a done deal, that there isn't a library set, but we want to make sure that it would be all right with this committee and we're not uh, changing anything if we requested that we go along with the library to 032. And uh, some of that, we've talked to folks in town hall and they would be very happy to have us move because they're, they're worried about uh, parking. They're worried about the fact that uh, uh, people will be using the town hall bathrooms. Um, they're worried about uh, being able to um, put a tent up for town meeting and everything. And it just seemed more uh, responsible to move with, if there is a library constructed, uh, the library can put an outdoor um, water system in right there, a tap for us. We wouldn't be moving all of the, the equipment and everything all the way down to the end of the field. Um, there's, there's just a lot of benefit to it, but I, we wanted to make sure that that was going to work with uh, what we had been approved to uh, do. And the time frame might be a little bit longer than what we were expecting because we don't know what the siting of the library would be if there is going to be a library. Does anybody have any comments? Yeah, Rita. So <laughs> the only comment I have is um, well, two comments actually. You know, one and it, is that the I was just looking up the town meeting vote. So the town meeting vote did designate the land behind the town hall yeah. in the article. Um, so we probably would need to change that, um, you know, to to do something at the at, you know, if we were going to use Lotto 32. So again, if if you're looking out a bit, it probably is not a big problem to have to go back to to town meeting um, for that language. And um, in terms of a um, intra-municipal grant agreement. Um, you know, we have a we have a format, so I'd be willing to to draft something, Elaine. But you know, it's really up to the CPC to um, then review those conditions. But um, I could do that for the next meeting, get it out in advance of the meeting, and then um, you know, it's a template that maybe we can use going forward. That would be great. Yeah. yeah. That'd be fine, I think. That'd be great, Rita. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. So we, we, we would then not go forward with anything of our planning until uh, the next town meeting so that we could just update with wh what the location would be. Right. Right. And yeah. by then, if we have the library, we would kind of, that would be underway, the, this, the site plan for the library, right? Right. 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 Okay. And you're not going to be doing much now anyway, because the ground's going to be frozen soon. <laughs> right. Anyway, okay, that sounds good to me. Thank anybody, you. Anybody have any objections? Okay. No. Cool. Um, Henry, historical commission. You got um, what's happening? Uh, we, we have. Um, we're, we're thinking about uh, the possibility of getting funding for um, a very visible historical marker. Uh, that needs repair. So we're talking about the uh, the signpost, the guidepost uh, uh, in front of Town Common. Yeah, you're all familiar with that, yes? Yeah, yeah. Right. It it needs painting. Um, it shouldn't cost a lot of money. We're getting a couple bids here to see if uh, we you know get the best deal for it, but. Um, would that be something that would be appropriate in this context? Words, so would you be coming to the CPC for support for that or? Correct. Okay, and, and, and waiting until spring after town meeting is okay? I suppose, yeah. Okay. It's not a rush job anyway, but it need, needs to be done. It, it's uh, in, in need of repair really. Yeah, my recollection was, was done a long time ago. The last last painting of that. Yeah. In bad shape. Yeah, it is. Linda has a question. L Linda. Yeah, I have a question. I was 
um, curious about um, the Friends of the Historical Society and um, I wondered about perhaps their contributing to the cost. I know that they have done so in the past. Looks like we have uh, a friend of the historical. <laughs> <laughs> I see Joan's iPad. I don't know if that means Joan. Well, there she is. Hi. Hello. Yes, <laughs> I would be willing to um, bring that to the board of directors and see if they would like to contribute. We do have some money available. Um, and it seems like a worthy cause to me. So can you, can you all hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, all right. This little iPad, I'm not quite sure exactly what it's doing, but anyway, <laughs> yes, I'd be willing to bring that to the board of directors if I had some kind of, uh, some kind of proposal or okay. um, cost. Oh, we're we're, we're going to, we haven't picked the word. Janice Stone and I are going to be working on that. So um, okay. yeah. we can share it with you, Joan. Yeah. Is it just... Too. Is it just painting or is there repair work to it too? I suspect that there may need to be there. The, there's a lot of scraping that needs to be done and I wouldn't be surprised if there's some rot. So yeah, I think yeah. there's, parts, there's parts of that thing that don't look very good from close right. So I think uh, that's probably what we'll probably want to include as an assessment of mm -hmm. um, and repairs if needed. Right, good. And I, I know I know the friends supported that uh, many, many years ago. We did, uh, um, we contributed to the, to the repair and painting. I think it was just the painting that we did, but anyway, we, let we us know. Put that that, that uh, mythical town back on it. Ripton, right. I, want, that's, I was just about to ask you. Ripton. Ripton. I'd like to see right. the added, that would be fun. <laughs> yes, keep me posted. Okay. Yeah. So Can I just, I just have one more question while um, Miriam is here and, and we have Henry here too. Are there other um, potential CPA projects that the Historic Commission has thought about? Well, the one thing that is that we're kind of digging into that we have thought about is that we've been working with the roving archivist program this past year from the uh, State Historical Records Advisory Board, SHRAB. And um, they came out and helped do an assessment of the collection that the historical commission has in Old Town Hall. And what we want to do is um, a number of things, but there are, are documents and records in that collection that are not in good shape and not in a climate controlled environment and um, could become deteriorated over time. So digitization in the long run may be something that we want to look at and maybe cataloging and making it accessible mm -hmm. to the community. Um, but the first things are we need to be doing an inventory. And um, my understanding is that that might not meet the criteria for a, um, for a grant. I know right. that inventories of historic properties for example, of historic buildings, those kind of inventories are funded, have been funded by CPCs, um, but, but this is an inventory before you've determined what's historically significant. So mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's gonna meet that criteria, but there may be some ways down the line where we could use CPA funds for some of this, yeah, but we have sure. to do an inventory first. So. What we're thinking about is doing it ourselves. There are a couple of people, Leslie Bracebridge and Greg Calton have volunteered to begin doing that process and then possibly looking for some other grant sources. So the roving archivist is continuing to consult with us and he can he's suggested some other funding sources. So there's some other grant that we can apply for. Great. I think that's the that only thing I'm thinking of, Henry. Is there anything else that involved? No, not for now, and least of all, given that this you know for next this round is, uh, is the, the time the deadline is, mm -hmm. is approaching yeah, yeah. Right. thank you i just remind everybody that the eligibility form is pretty easy to fill out it takes if you know what you're doing 10 minutes or 15 minutes 
So if you got some ideas in mind, be sure to be sure to fill one out. Um, so the one open issue that we have um, that we keep putting off is the projects that we have funded that are not going anywhere. I had a long talk with Bob Groves the other day about the town hall, and that seems to be inching along. Um, inching along, I guess is the term. Um, some of the other ones, I, I, the Lake Wyola North Cove one, I, there's nobody there that takes responsibility for it anymore. I can't find them, if anybody knows. Um, the people that put the proposal in, I think are left or are no longer interested in it. And it seems to be it's just hanging in midair. So we really ought to decide what we're gonna do and what we can do in recovering some of the funds that we've allocated to this um, and uh, what kind of pressure we can put on the people that have the, that have okayed projects that have not moved forward at all. What would you name this project, the Lake Wyola? I think it was the North Cove dredging. North Cove. North, North Cove, yeah. yeah. And yeah. it was just, um, we were- It was Mark- Providing uh, some, yeah, engineering money. Yeah. And, just a portion and, of it. Right. And, and nobody's taking responsibility, as far as I can tell, for that project at all. But I want to be clear, the money hasn't been distributed, right, at this point? Correct. It's still, sit it's still sitting in our accounts. I mean, I got a, a thing from Gail, uh, which I don't have right in front of me, the other day. And as far as I remember, um, the money is still sitting in that account. Yes. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure it is. So, yeah. I mean, off the top of my head, and I'm, you know, we could research, but it seems like what might be a reasonable step is for the CPC to approve a policy about clawing back money and then have town meeting vote on it, you know, so that whatever the process within a couple of years or if there's no accountability, but it seems like you just can't have money floating out there. And for us just to take actions right. without any, any, Sign off by the town since the yeah, as far as I can tell, on these old projects, we didn't have an agreement, right? Um, right for them, so yeah, no, but I, I so I so it would have to be a town meeting vote, yeah. yeah it seems like right. there's two things there's either but a if, town if we made if, if we take your suggestion, which I think we should, and yeah. make a generalized agreement for people who get money from the CPC, uh, and, and what their responsibilities are, then. Then we can take that to town. I mean, I think we should do that, Michael. Yeah. And we have I, templates for it. Huh? And we have templates for, uh, it, they're, they're called grant agreements. So. Right, we, we do. We have yeah. one for an intra, a, a letter. So it's a pretty straightforward for intra-municipal um, awards, then right. um, more of a, you know, a lengthier agreement for, um, Right. Uh, for non-municipal. And, and we, and I guess we did, we did that in response to some of these earlier projects that were not mm -hmm. getting anywhere. Yeah. I mean, just so, to clarify, I think, you know, what we had talked about at least last year, maybe before is for future, for projects that we approve now that we sign the agreements, I guess what mm -hmm. I was suggesting was we're not, not to bring the template for the agreements to town meeting, but to come up with a policy no. that says, Right, you know, how long for recovering yeah. the funds yeah. for the project yeah. for in place? Yes, exactly. but I don't think but we need to go to town meeting for that. We we can make that decision. You think the, so? Yeah, yeah, we just yeah. I just we send a notice to the, yeah. to, okay. the uh, to the principal investigator on the project and then tell them we're we were sending the, the, the support. I, I think we can get away with that. I'm not sure. I I, I looked through the coalition web pages. And I can't find, I don't know, maybe you have better luck than I do, Rita, uh, finding um, examples of towns that have dealt with this. There are not many. Yeah. So, um, Michael, to answer your question, though, we could have the grant agreement. I think we still would have, probably would have to go to town meeting to do the actual rescission of the money. But we would set the deadline based on um, a policy set by the CPC. So in a lot of communities, they use three years. So they say, if you don't 
if you don't get anything underway um, within three years, or if you don't make you know substantial progress, then we will, um, you know, we will we will go and and ask for the money to be rescinded. Yeah, the yeah. substantial project wording I think is a lot better than not getting nothing underway. Yeah, I, I think the three years makes a lot of sense to me, Rita. Is, is that yeah. the language that re is reflected in the template agreements? Yes. Okay, so it's consistent, so that makes sense. Mm -hmm. do, you yeah. want to send it, do you want to send that around, Rita? Yeah, I'll send them around. Okay. Thank you. I might have one, I'm not sure. Yeah, that would be great. And that, and that is really um, some of what the rec committee is wanting to make sure that we're still within everybody's limits here. Mm -hmm. as, and that yeah. we're not just stalling, you know. We, we would love yeah. to have gotten started this fall, but uh, right, not going. <laughs> there were extenuating circumstances. Well, the the biggest one is the is the town hall project, and and Bob is having problems mm -hmm. finding contractors that are willing to even look at it. So, and it's getting it's gotten worse as we got further into COVID because people are not interested in, according to Bob. They're not a lot of them around, so I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do about that one. He says he's still looking. So um, maybe what we should do is um, invite him, building committee, to come to one of our meetings just so we could talk about. Well, one of the problems is that the building committee has not been meeting regularly, from what my understanding. And that's not our problem. No. <laughs> no. Well, it, it actually is, Elaine, because because they got thirty four thousand dollars of our money. Well, I don't have it. We still don't have it. it. Well, we haven't released have any money. They have first rights to us. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, we we need to do something. Well, the just FYI, the select board is meeting with the building committee tomorrow night just to talk about the um, the building committees. Functioning or lack thereof. The lack so, thereof, um, right? Well, that's good. That's good. So maybe we just hold this off until after that meeting. Yeah. Does anyone know anyone on the select board? No, <laughs> <laughs> I resigned before this meeting. <laughs> I've had it. <laughs> I, I I do have a, a suggestion, sort of coming back to Alan's earlier idea about creating a a trust or a fund or something. I mean, that's another opportunity. Like if. In fact, we felt like we wanted to not totally receive the money. You could transfer it into that fund and then mm -hmm. we would have control of it for future, you know, so if a contractor showed up and was going to do the work, we could, you know, turn it around. So that's, that's another, not that we shouldn't do what we just discussed, but it's another opportunity if it's really about logistics. Um, yeah, my, 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 my understanding from reading the, the, the paper is that you can do this for, Conservation, conservation of, of property and land, conservation commissions, and affordable housing. Those are the two that you can do it for. Mm. You know, I, I'll send this around. If you think otherwise, I mean, we, we, I'd, I'd be willing to. We could be willing, we could discuss this again. Anything else? So, so, here so we motion. meet again on the 16th at 5.30. And um, uh, Alan, will you circulate the um, determination of eligibility forms prior to the meeting? Um, Does everybody want to see them or do you want to just yes. wait until the meeting? Yeah, totally. No. Yes. Before. Yeah. You're talking about the ones that are being filled out or the blank ones? They're doing no. on the tenth, which gives you know, which will give us a right. you know a bit to look them over. The as completed get, ones. As soon as I get them, I'll yep. circulate Great. them. Yeah. Great. Right. And Henry and Linda, I sent you emails asking which email you want me to forward to. So just let me know. Okay. Since okay. you both have two email addresses mm -hmm. that I know of. Do you prefer one over the other, Henry? They can they can just tell me an email, it's fine. All right. Well, all right. Okay, good. great. Um, and uh, thank you, Alan, turn. for your um, endurance in getting this meeting. Um, oh, I, I hope this never happens again. <laughs> Rescheduled yeah. and. Jeez. Oh, I, 
Um, that was. Yeah. So I hear a motion to. So moved. Second. Second. Hanson, aye. Leo, aye. Farrell, aye. Geddes, aye. Akira, aye. Scott, aye. Good night, Good everybody. everybody. It's unanimous. Good night. Good night, everybody. Okay, I'm going to end the meeting. <laughs> Good. Hit the right button. <laughs>